Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles, and today we're going to go over um, the rest of that game jam I submitted to. And so, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been sick, and my voice sounded kind of like this. Hey everyone, it's Timmy Gobbles uh, here with another video, and I'm just going to have to record this another day, I guess. And so since it's been a while since I recorded, I don't completely remember everything, but I'm going to try to go over everything that I remember uh, when I was going, working on this game jam. So, okay, so yeah, I, I'm making a health component. This is just so that it's consistent across enemies and allies and players and whatnot and it's gonna handle the damage, and it's gonna handle the health and healing and your max health and stuff like that. And so when a player or an enemy takes damage, then that that like class is gonna pass it to the health component to deal with it. And when the health component runs out, we're gonna need a, a signal to tell, you know, its parent that, hey, you're out of health. Too bad, buddy. All right, there we go. And I think I was doing some kind of stress test here. It worked pretty well. All right. And next are space stations. So I wanted, I, I don't think I ever implemented it, but I wanted to put enemy space stations out there that would like spawn enemies and stuff like that and still have like laser attacks and stuff. Um, so that's its, its own kind of enemy. So it needs to inherit from the enemy master class. What are we doing? It's this. Okay, so I think I was trying to figure out how I was going to do rotation for because I want the space stations to kind of slowly rotate, kind of like they're drifting in space. They're, they're not really flying around or moving. Um, they're at like a kind of like a fixed location, but maybe they have a little bit of rotation. Um, I think you see that a lot in sci-fi movies where it's, it's rotating to make some kind of like artificial gravity or you know, maybe rotating. Usually it, I think it gives the object more believability if it's moving a little bit. And if you don't want something moving around, then just having it rotate a little bit gives that kind of feeling that it's it's there. It's not just like an image. Oh, my nose is still clogged. All right, and we, and we need to tell that enemy space station to fire. Um, so I give it a shorter range than the enemy ships because the enemy ships like move around and it's kind of just fixed. I don't even know that it was necessary, but what I didn't really want was a bunch of things shooting at you off the screen. And I think eventually in my impl implementation, uh, when you start out and your vision stat is really low, uh, you do get shot at by things off the screen. Um, but it's not like too far. It's not it's not like a whole two screen distances of things shooting at you So so having it a little bit seems okay I also wanted the lasers on the space stations to be bigger I was going to and was gonna give it like a damage stat so that like it does more damage because it's a bigger laser You know bigger lasers should deal more damage uh, That's just kind of intuitive. I, I never got around to that though, unfortunately Okay, so next is, ooh, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I want to, so as you upgrade your vision, you start to see things in color, like your HUD and enemy ships and then the background. So if I'm gonna do that, then I need um, different enemy classes that have color PNGs as their, um, their spaceship. So here we just grab like, nine of these from one of those Kenny art packs. And now I need to code in. So each of these is from a an atlas. So I need to find, well, really they're, they're PNGs, huh? So each of these ships is packed onto one image. So I need to get the, the rectangles and whatnot. And I want the hitboxes to look right. Um, what else is there? Oh, you know, they, they, I used the individual images, huh? I didn't, I didn't do um, region. Anyways, that, that worked on something else, so. Use some of my lasagna.
All right, so yeah, I wanted the hitboxes to match the shape of the ship image. Um, but it's always kind of annoying when you see something in a game and you shoot at it and you miss and you're like, well, I, I hit a part of it. It looks like I hit a part of it, but it went right through it. So I think it's important to modify that kind of thing. All right, so I needed some kind of menu. So I kind of have this very messy graph here of panels and H boxes and V boxes and labels and buttons. And so the idea is I want to kind of cordon off some of the screen where the menu is going to go. And then in that, um, in that panel, I'm going to have several very similar menus that I will hide or display depending on where in the menu tree you are. So like when the game starts, it's just gonna be like the start game screen that wants you to press a button to continue. And the reason why I like kind of having that is when you have an HTML game, sometimes when the game loads, um, it's like the browser doesn't know you have that game in focus. So you need to like click on it and then press a button and then it, know, it knows that that's what you're trying to do. Um, so like a lot of the times I'll start up one of my games, and I'll hit spacebar and it'll just scroll my, my page down instead of like activating the game. That tells me that I need to click on the game to continue. I should probably put that in part of the prompt, like click and press a button or I don't know, something. <clears throat> so what are the other menus that I need? And a lot of these things, I just ran out of time implementing, like load game and um, settings. I don't think I ever set up settings. All right, enough of that. We're going to do some more stuff with the threat map that never worked. Um, so the learning rate is going to be the ratio at which the threat map changes. So if you spawn a ship, it's going to multiply by the learning rate. And if you despawn a ship it'll divide by the learning rate so it's gonna it's gonna grow the threat and the rate at which or the um the chance for like enemies to spawn is going to be based on that like threat map value where your ship is at okay so I totally forgot where I was going there. <clears throat> so updating the algorithm. Uh, what I wanted to do was like, if you're farming a specific area of space, as it spawns ships, the threat maps decreasing. And so that area will have like a depleted value of threat. So that if you go back there, there won't be as many enemies to fight. And kind of the goal was to have kind of an alternation, alternating um, resources and enemies dynamic going on uh, that I never kind of got into. Whereas, so if there's a lot of ships in that area, that means that the resources will be depleting. So um, I guess this kind of like inspiration came from like college uh, differential equations. So one of the classic examples is a predator prey model. So you have like rabbits and wolves. So the rabbits population is determined on, is based on like, if there weren't any wolves, then um, an area of the forest can only support so many rabbits because they'll eat all the seeds or grass or whatever. And then when you introduce wolves into the dynamic, now the rabbits max population is based on one, how many wolves there are eating them. And then two, how much, you know, the, the maximum amount of rabbits that the forest can provide for. And then when you look at the wolves population, it's going to be solely based on how many wolves there are and how many rabbits there are. 
is if you don't have enough rabbits to feed the wolves, then the wolves are going to be hungry, you're going to make less wolf babies, or they'll starve, or, you know, etc. So my, kind of my idea was you'll have floating resources like asteroids or derelict spaceships or um, scrap and whatnot and other things that you could interact with to get resources for your ship or your spaceship or whatever. And then, gosh, you know, I've gone so off the rails here. What am I even looking at? All right, so I got to finish this up. Um, and so by defeating a lot of enemies, there would be more like junk in that area for you to collect and less enemies. Or maybe if there was a lot of junk in an area, that would attract more enemies or something like that or vice versa. But I never got around to making that work. So wait. So now, um, okay, we need to get the start game to work. It looks like I've completely lost what's going on here. And so when the game starts, if there is no threat map, I need to make a new one. And if there is a threat map, then I need to load um, whatever threat map was supposed to be loaded. Need some more of this lasagna. All right, here we go with the spawn time. So every certain number of seconds, I want to find a random value. If that value is in a certain range, based on the threat map, then I want to spawn an enemy. And then adjust the threat map. The threat map needs to, um, needs to reduce. Yeah, threat reduction. Okay. Now, where do I want to spawn the enemy? So I take the player and I take a random unit vector, unit, um, vector, unit, unit length vector, my gosh. And I want to rotate that vector randomly 180 degree, you know, uh, 360 degrees, between zero and 360 degrees, and then spawn it like 800 units away from the, the player's position. That's what that was doing. Okay, so now trying to set up the menu. So I have menu titles and I have um, some save locations. Figuring out resources was, took me like a whole day to figure it out and I still don't really understand it that well. Um, and a lot of what I got hung up on was the, um, the suffix on like the kind of file you want to save. I, I think what I wanted was a trace file or a TRES file, which was I think text resource. That's probably, it's, I know trace is what I want to say, but it's probably text resource. And I kept trying things like TSCN, which I think is um, text scene. Um, but text scene was wrong and it didn't work. But eventually uh, TRES worked and that was great. And it was great because um, spending a whole day uh, learning something that wasn't used for the game was a waste anyway, so it was good to move on. That was a, that was a big a big thing I learned was I'd, I'd mess with all these funky things and they didn't make my game better. Like I learned something, so that's cool. It's, it's cool to know more about Godot and programming and that stuff. But I think the next time I do a game jam, every time I want to learn something new, I need to think, okay, is this going to make my game better if I, if I spend the time to learn this um, sloppily? Because when, when there's a time crunch, it's not like I'm learning how to do it well. I'm just learning how to get it to basically work, just, just the, the bare minimum. So is implementing that, is learning this and implementing it poorly going to make my game better? And that's a question I should have asked a lot of times. I think having a pause menu was cool and having a start menu was cool, but um, none of them, none of those things like the amount of polish they added very minusculely benefited my game. I could have spent more time making enemies and have different kinds of attacks and I, I should have like come up with a way to introduce the player to playing the game. I don't have that. I just kind of have like some instructions, you know, plat map. Um, some instructions typed out on the on the page. Okay, so I'm trying to connect all these buttons up to functions that do stuff. 
and I need there's like so many things I got to keep track of with the menu. I gotta I gotta see where where in the menu are is is the game at the moment, and so that's kept track of with an int. All right, now looking at the time, two days, 21 hours, not a lot of time, and I don't have a lot of game. So I've got a lot to, a lot to finish up here. Uh, one of the things that derailed me pretty good was um, for the past like couple months or so, a friend of mine has been trying to get me to play like the Pokemon trading card game. And um, a couple weeks before this game jam, there was a big tournament that we were gonna go to. I ordered my cards from like TCG player and I, I didn't have half my deck by the time there was time for the tournament. I didn't really have the funds to go like buy a deck in person, um, even though that would have been maybe viable based on where I live. But yeah, it sucked. So then this one came up. Uh, it was like in the middle of the tournament. It was on maybe like the 10th or the 11th or something. And I had cards and it, I, I just had, you know, I, I spent a day doing that, but that I think between rounds, I was I was I brought my laptop with me and I figured out how to make like that matrix class, and that was kind of cool for the threat map. Um, but again, like the threat map, kind of like I, I could have just had like a random number generator and would be fine. Could have just spawned random enemies. It's basically what it does, right? It doesn't. It the the player can't really tell the difference between it just randomly spawning stuff. It seems to have it to where. There's more action randomly. It kind of like spreads the action into bursts. But then if you play too long, there's just a bunch of enemies on the map anyways. So it's not like it It does make maybe the gameplay, it makes it confusing because you're flying around and you think, oh, the game just doesn't work. There's no enemies anywhere. There's nothing for me to do. There's no asteroids. There's no enemies. I have no direction and what to do. And then a couple seconds later, like there's a bunch of enemies shooting at you and stuff. and. Um, hopefully you've read the instructions, you know how to hit F to uh, find the space station to go back and get upgrades. But if you don't know that, then you're going to get destroyed and you're going to spawn back at your space station that isn't even that well defined because it looks like the enemy space stations are not like that distinct. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's confusing. Right? So I, I should have spent more time making it more um, intuitive and in what is happening on the screen. Okay, what we got here? We got all these different menus I have to connect, and gosh, there's still half this video left. It's crazy. Um, oh, there's so many buttons, and there's probably a better way to do this where I have like five or six buttons that I activate or deactivate based on what screen I'm in, and I can change the things. But it, it, having it this messy wasn't that bad. And um, I don't know if you saw that, but. I, I make sure every other menu but the one I want is is disabled or not visible um, when I'm on a different menu. Just to, just to be sure that I don't end up in some state where, oh, look at that mess, geez. Hey, look, I got some of the, the my, my health bar is working. It doesn't do anything when you die, but you know, it's, it's, it's working, it's there. All right, it's upgrade system time. This was something I absolutely want. So you know that's going to be a new menu. Now, what funny thing was, I got too much lasagna in here. I had an idea for each of these stats, and the AI system. I wanted to have like a dialogue thing you could talk to or interact with when you were back on your space station, and that was going to be what the AI system did. Also, what I wanted the AI system to do. Um, was to help your was to help your weapon aim. So as it is now, it just shoots straight forward. But what I think what I was gonna do was give it kind of like a wiggliness to where it would kind of shoot forward, but it you know the angle would change a little bit um, based on your AI system to like auto target the closest enemy or um, having an AI system that would like, give you hints um, like if you were kind of flying around an area with low threat map maybe it would give you a hint hey there aren't that many enemies here you should go in this direction and that would be something 
that would improve. But so it, what happened was I, I ran out of time. And so that stat doesn't do anything at all. It's useless. <laughs> it's just uh, what else is useless? The um, there's another one in there. I forgot which one it was. Anyways, at, after a certain so after after a certain point, the HUD doesn't do anything. After a certain point, vision um, caps out and it resets back to like zero or something, which is really wonky. I didn't fix. And the weapon one, I think all it does. The weapons upgrade, I think I implemented by it. Um, it decreases the timer on your on the fire rate, so it'll fire faster. And I kind of did that like Pokemon method of um, it's like two over two plus weapon times the initial timer value. So if the initial timer value is like 0.1 and you have two and your weapon firing, that's going to fire twice as fast. Or if you have four and you're firing, then it's going to fire three times as fast. So it'll be at a two would be like 0.05. And, um, a four would be like point. Oh, three, 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 or whatever. Okay, so next is what am I looking at? Oh, the menu. Yeah, I was. I I ended up deciding it was easier just to uh, do export and slap the menu um, as a variable in the world instead of just doing the um, the other way to reference it. Um. Okay, so every time every time I add a new part of the menu, I have to go through to each of these things and tell them what to do. What what might have been a better way would be to have an array of the different menu screens, and then when one activates, you go through the array, make sure everything else is off except for the one that's activating, and you make sure that one's on. And so that that might have been a better way to do that. Who knows? <laughs> I actually, actually might start doing that moving forward. That sounds pretty good. Uh, yeah, I guess the only thing is you'd want to make sure. Okay, so I had a, I had a lot of trouble with the upgrade system. So what I wanted to do was the upgrade system has to choose those three things or whatever, the, the three options, and then I wanted it to wait for the player to click on one of them and then continue on with the function. And so I, I found the wait function and that was super helpful. So what that does is the the wait function basically pauses that that method until it hears the signal that, uh, that you set up when you call the wait function. It's like, wait for this and so when you have a function that emits that signal, it can actually pass a value to, it can, it can have a return value. And so it'll wait for that return value and then that's what I end up using is I, I need to wait for the player to click on a button. That button emits the signal with the value of which button was pressed. And then based on the button that was pressed, I know what stats I need to add to the player. Uh, oh gosh, another one was fuel. I never I never made fuel do anything. It just goes down. It, it goes down to zero, and that's it. It doesn't stop you from moving around. You still can move around. That would have been an easy thing to fix. All right, I guess it's time for music. So I kind of just go in here and I get some music, and I, um, I even have some victory screen music, but the victory screen never comes up, so that doesn't really matter, does it? A um, whole bunch of stuff in there to look at all these tabs I have. I've got one about um, rock gen. I've got a tab about some kind of Maridon deck for Pokemon. And all right, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, yep. Another, another screen, another, I have to go through everything and make sure it's all closed and then add this to every other of the other ones. I, I wasn't doing that. Maybe I was playing it fast and loose. I don't know. 
Um, okay, so then vision color is going to when it um, when your vision is a certain amount, then it's going to give those those health bars tints to you know make them look more like health bars and fuel bars. I wasn't sure what colors I ended up picking, but my wife didn't call me, right? No, we're good. Thank God. So, what am I doing? What do we got here? Uh, the phase summary. <laughs> so one funny thing that was happening was so I was upgrading the, uh, the player. Um, after you do an upgrade, there's a summary page. And I, I had it to where I was accidentally adding like the summary instead of the upgrade. So then the player's health would like exponentially or um, not really exponential. Is that it was X. No, was it? But anyways, oh yeah, geometrically increasing because you start with 10 health and if you do your upgrade and you don't get any more health then you're adding 10 to 10, so you got 20 health. And then the next upgrade you're doing 20 plus 20, you're getting 40 health. That is geometric, it's two times two times two times two. Plus whatever uh, little add-ons you get, uh, which don't really matter in your growth rate. Uh, because, um, and additive growth rate's gonna be much less than times two. Um, anyways, so that, that was a funny little error. All right, the vision scale, uh, based on the value you have, it's going to zoom out. It's gonna zoom out a little bit. So you can see farther. You can eventually see farther than you can shoot. Just, I think, fine. So you start here, and it's very zoomed in. Things can shoot you off screen. That's a problem. Uh, um, but what did I mess up here? Who knows? Who knows what I messed up? Oh, you know, I, I need sprites for when you upgrade the ship. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, yeah, this was going to be the indicator for when the player is... When you want to go back to base, I, ne I needed a way to tell you how to get there. So I all I do is I have this little PNG that's offset, that's a little triangle. And um, if, and I, of course I get the angle wrong starting out because I always do that. Um, if you're, um, you're far, you know, if, if you hold F, it'll show you that, it'll show you that little arrow pointing back to the base. So you know which direction to go at least. Anyway, you know, it was a quick and dirty fix. Um, and I made it the same key as turning in your, your scrap. Just to, uh, you know, that's the I want to turn in my scrap button. Out my throat. Okay, so. Error test vision. Oh, oh, got some error there. Oh, yeah, I, my computer had been on for probably like a week and it started getting really slow and I ended up having to restart it. Oh, that's funny. I was like, why is my game so slow? Did I did I finally add too many things? And, it, you know, like, imagine a game that looks like this um, being too slow for the computer. Not funny. Or I might have been testing fire rate. I'm not even sure. All right, there we have it. The, the spacey times. That looks great. I, I, I need to spend a day and figure out how, what the optimal size um, for a parallax background is because it seems in in the flappy bird in the flappy pig game and I think even in the hot sauce one I run into this issue where Godot doesn't want to duplicate the background image fast enough it it wants to wait till the very last second to duplicate the image so then you're you're moving off the screen and you can see the new image spawn in and it's really it's it's kind of frustrating I'd, I'd like to just have it I'd like there to be like a padding feature that's just like, hey, do do a little better, man. Just 
But really, I, you know, it's my fault for not understanding how it works. So I, I, I need to play around with it when I'm not. Because when I'm, when I'm trying to do a project, it's like not a good time to figure it out because I, I get frustrated that, hey, this isn't doing what it says it does. It says it's going to duplicate it every, you know, this many pixels and I'm at this many pixels and it's waiting till I've gone over that many pixels or I can see a little bit further than I think I can. And then that ends up, you know, I'm spawning stars on top of stars and it looks really bad. All right, so I got that victory music. Um, I don't know if I did sound effects yet. I think I ended up using the go-kart one. That, that was good. I've used that in a couple of videos. That one had a, a, a good enough sound for space, I think. Very clunky, kind of industrially sounding. It's so much easier to tell that your ship is moving with the background. So I think like that's kind of the best upgrade is weapon and vision gives you the most feedback. Uh, the, the HUD one's good too, because you can see your scrap and you can see your health, but um, it, they don't make the, I don't, I don't think the, the visual impact is as big. All right, so now when you die, it sends you back to the base. I, I couldn't get the strafe to work good. Oh gosh, okay, so something I should have done was I should have made shoot spacebar because it's it's very hard to use. You pretty much always want to be, there's no detriment to shooting, right? So you want to be shooting a lot. And it's it's hard to use Q and E to strafe. Um, or I should have made this like have controller support. I also didn't do that. That was, that was a, kind of a silly mistake, wasn't it? I read something about Godot having issues with controllers on HTML and that was just kind of like the way that it is. So maybe that maybe that would have bungled me up a bit. Maybe I would have had, had to spend a, a while trying to figure out how that works. <laughs> right on the on the uh, the the big mode Discord that they're extending the time for you to like try out other games. I've tried out a couple. My only issue is. Um, I'm usually on my laptop, which I don't like have a mouse plugged into, and it's kind of hard to play some of the other people's games with just a keyboard. And um, I also like most of my free time is spent with my kids, so I can't like play anything that's too violent because they're they're really young. I don't really want to. Uh, I mean, this, I don't know that they're, they also don't have a lot of patience, but what's been really funny is, um, well, we see their cousins a lot and I'll, I'll bring my laptop cause I'll, I don't know, I can hang out with people for a while, but after a couple hours, it's like, eh, I mean, I'm out of, I'm out of stuff to say. I don't have anything else to say. I saw you last week. You know what's going on in my life. I don't have anything say and I don't really want to talk about politics or um, there hasn't been anything that exciting out on on the streaming services so I, I, there's 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 a uh, um, not very much for me to talk about with my family kind of I I don't know how to converse and stuff I'm, I'm real I'm a real shut in so I'll bring my laptop and I'll, I'll work on games and stuff but um, like my my nieces or my son will want to play the the hot sauce game a lot they seem to like that one and i just that's um it makes me really happy that that one of them stuck the landing you know but my um my son and um um my niece that's they're around the same age they'll like take turns on a laptop and it's nice that it's on html right because like you know they can use papa's laptop to to play it or whatever they don't have to use mine so I can I can work on stuff while they're playing and then I know I know there's some issues with the hitboxes in that game because my niece has been like what what hit me I don't even know what I hit and I know it's the stupid it's the one it's the dang um the corn dog on a stick there's something wrong with it okay so I'm making the enemies projectile and there's a space station I <laughs> I was trying to 
It's like the simplest things I get gummed up on. Um, oh, I need to make some sound effects too. Did I do sound effects already? I don't know. I guess it looks like I'm doing a doing the um, what's that called? The credits page. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Doesn't that look great? I should have turned off the settings menu. It looks stupid. Anyways, that hot dog and a stick. I know that's what's getting her because um, everything else she's pretty aware that she's hit. All right, everything seems to be working. The upgrade system works. Lasers shoot too fast. I was gonna make a um, an end game kind of thing where when you upgrade something too extreme that it just ends the game because it's... Um, and I, I, I was having like these really cringy things that would say like if your vision got too high it's like you peered into the depths of space and then you know had kind of a vague um you died kind of thing going on there but uh I, I don't know that was really cringy so i i stopped doing that so then um i uh I uploaded on the github and then i um you know i put it on itch and i think i had i still had like three or four hours left but uh, I couldn't bear to watch it any. I couldn't bear to work on it anymore. I felt um, I felt like I couldn't get very much done in a couple hours, and so I ended up working on something else. <clears throat> so that's it. That's Space Chumbo. The name doesn't seem to mean anything. I just had to put a name on it, so I put a name on it. And um, I don't know. Someone said something nice about it in one of the reviews. That made me feel great. I love seeing that stuff. And, you know, here it is. Here I am playing it. Um, I, had, I had a user request for an in-game level editor. So I think that that's gonna... I think I can tie that into that roguelite. And I've kind of worked on it a little bit. And um, I know they asked for a tutorial, but if I think I make something really solid, it's gonna be a tutorial. And if I think like it's a, eh, I got it to work, then it's gonna be more, you know, it'll be more wrinkly like this. And that's, that's what's coming up. Uh, sorry you guys had to wait so long for the next video. I hope everyone had a good holidays and a happy new year and all that stuff. I, I did, I had a lot of fun even though I was sick. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.